thyroid gland, situated at the front of the neck and overlying the trachea, consists of two lateral lobes and a connecting isthmus. Thyroid tissues trap iodine circulating in the blood and use it to produce the hormones thyroxine and triiodothyronin. When secreted into the bloodstream, these hormones increase the metabolic rate of all body tissues. The thyroid gland also produces the hormone calcitonin, which helps regulate the calcium content of bones. In the thyroid, thyroglobulin and thyroid peroxidase are synthesized by follicular cells. Hydrogen peroxide is synthesized at the luminal membrane. The artery in organic iodide is trapped from the circulation and transported to the follicular lumen where it is oxidized by hydrogen peroxide. Iodine is then transferred into the tyrosine residues in, in the thyroglobulin by iodinase enzymes, forming monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. Subsequently, the formation of T4 occurs as a result of coupling of two diiodotyrosine residues and of T3 by coupling a diiodotyrosine and a monoiodotyrosine. The, the hormones are then stored within the gland until they release into the circulation. Finally, thyroglobulin is resolved into the follicular cell, hydrolyzed and the amino acids and remaining iodide reused. Hypothyroidism is the clinical state that results from decreased production of thyroid hormones, or very rarely from tissue resistance. Primary hypothyroidism accounts for more than 95% of adult cases and is due to failure of thyroid gland itself as a result of autoimmune destruction or the effects of treatment of thyrotoxicosis. Hypothyroidism may also be drug induced by agents such as amiodarone and lithium which causes hypothyroidism in around 10% of patients treated. Secondary disease is due to hypopituitarism and the tertiary disease is due to failure of the hypothalamus. Peripheral hypothyroidism is due to tissue insensitivity to the action of thyroid hormones. The clinical features of hypothyroidism can affect multiple body systems, are mainly non-specific and gradual in onset. The most common symptoms reported by patients are weakness, lethargy, cold intolerance, slowness, constipation, memory loss, and weight gain. The skin becomes dry and flaky, head hair thins and is dry, and the patients may have noticed a change in a voice with deeping or gruffness. The laboratory investigation of hypothyroidism is extremely simple, usually clinical assessment combined with a single estimation of thyroid hormones and TSH is sufficient to make the diagnosis. The aims of treatment with thyroxine are to ensure that patients receive a dose that will restore well-being and which usually retains the TSH level to the lower end of the normal range. It is important to avoid both under and over treatment. Hyperthyroidism is defined as the production by thyroid gland of excessive amounts of thyroid hormones. Thyrotoxicosis refers to the clinical syndrome associated with the prolonged exposure to elevated levels of thyroid hormone. Hyperthyroidism is a disorder of various etiologies. First, Graves disease. Graves disease is the most common cause of thyrotoxicosis. It is an autoimmune condition resulting from production of an abnormal immunoglobulin. This immunoglobulin is able to occupy the TSH receptor on the thyroid follicular cell, where it might mix the effect of TSH, causing cell division and stimulating thyroid hormone secretion. Second, nodular disease. Toxic multinodular goiter is also a common form of thyrotoxicosis, often affecting older women. Third, thyroiditis. If the thyroid is inflamed by viral or a rapid autoimmune attack, the resulting follicular cell death will lead to the release of performed thyroid hormones. Thyrotoxicosis is characterized by increased metabolism of all body systems due to excessive quantities of thyroid hormones. The clinical signs and symptoms reflect increased adrenergic activity, especially in cardiovascular and in neurological systems. Additionally, clinical features will depend on the underlying cause of thyrotoxicosis. The extrathyroidal manifestation of a Graves disease deserves separate mention. Most frequent is ophthalmopathy due to inflammation and expansion of the content of the orbit. 
The eye is pushed forward such that white sclera appears between the iris and the lower lid. In any patient with suspected thyrotoxicosis, it is good practice to document the diagnosis with at least two sets of thyroid function tests. Plasma-free T4 and or T3 levels are clearly elevated on more than 90% of patients with thyrotoxicosis. The TSH level is suppressed to subnormal levels in all causes of thyrotoxicosis except TSH secreting pituitary adenomas. In the majority of patients, the combination of the clinical finding and simple investigation is sufficient to make a firm diagnosis. Radioactive iodine uptake scans will uh, differentiate those patients with thyroiditis. Measurements of uh, thyroid receptor antibodies will identify grave disease patient. If the diagnosis is still equivocal, the clinical finding should be reassessed and the particular attention paid to the patient's drug history. There are a number of drugs that may modify the clinical features or interfere with the tests. A number of factors need to be considered when choosing the most appropriate form of therapy for an individual patient. There are usually a number of therapeutic options available and the patient should be involved in deciding on treatment. Three forms of therapy available are antithyroid drugs, surgery, and radioactive iodine. Antithyroid drugs, the thionamide, propyl thiouracil, thiamazole, and its precursor carbimazole are equally effective pharmacological therapies for thyrotoxicosis. Thyroid ablative therapy, where thyroid ablation is required for all patients with toxic multinodular goiters, those who have relapsed or are likely to relapse after drug therapy for Graves' disease, and those who are allergic to thionamide. Thyroid ablation can be achieved by radioiodine or surgery. Radioactive iodine is extremely easy to administer and very effective for majority of patients. It is contraindicated in pregnancy and breastfeeding and it is usually avoided in children. Surgery. Surgery is required for those patients with very large goiters, patients who cannot be persuaded for the safety of radioiodine, and those who have reacted adversely to both thionamide in pregnancy.